Welcome everyone. Today we're going to listen to a passage from the Old Testament from the prophet Ezekiel and we're going to consider the implications it has for those who have leadership responsibilities in the world of politics, big business and the like. But first let's share a word of prayer together. Lord, we come for guidance for our journey. Your word for our minds and the power of the Spirit to give us life. We have come to you, Lord, because you are the way, the truth and the life. Amen. Our reading is from the book of Ezekiel. In the first part of the reading, the prophet speaks out against the leaders of Israel who have failed God's people. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Woe to you, shepherds of Israel, who only take care of yourselves. Should not shepherds take care of the flock? You eat the curds, clothe yourselves with the wool and slaughter the choice animals. But you do not take care of the flock. You have not strengthened the weak or healed the sick or bound up the injured. You have not brought back the strays or searched for the lost. You have ruled harshly and brutally. So they were scattered because there was no shepherd. And when they were scattered, they became food for all the wild animals. My sheep wandered all over the mountains and on every high hill. They were scattered over the whole earth, and no one searched or looked for them. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As surely as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord, because my flock lacks a shepherd, and so has been plundered and has become food for all the wild animals, and because my shepherds did not search for my flock, but cared for themselves rather than for my flock. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. I am against the shepherds and will hold them accountable for my flock. I will remove them from tending the flock so that the shepherds can no longer feed themselves. I will rescue my flock from their mouths and it will no longer be food for them. Thank you. 
from Ezekiel, we hear how the Lord himself will be Israel's shepherd. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. As a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them, so I will look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on a day of clouds and darkness. I will bring them out from the nations and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. I will pasture them on the mountains of Israel, in the ravines and in all the settlements in the land. I will tend them in a good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel will be their grazing land. There they will lie down in good grazing land, and there they will feed in a rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will tend my sheep and have them lie down, declares the Sovereign Lord. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak, but the sleek and the strong I will destroy. I will shepherd the flock with justice. We're blessed that in where we are located in Ilkley, we can see beautiful countryside all around us. And of course, much of that is open moorland, which is used to farm sheep. I always find that there is something reassuringly peaceful about walking through a field of sheep, a sort of oasis in what can be a busy and hectic world. And whether I'm out walking locally in the Yorkshire Dales or maybe somewhere on a holiday like the Lake District, I can find myself envying the sheep farmers who work in these beautiful places. But of course, sheep farming is a hard life. It's tough work as sheep are not self-sufficient. They need looking after. They need their shepherd to take care of their needs. Food to eat in harsh winter. They need safe pasture to graze and protection from harm. The people of Israel understood about shepherds. They were farming folk, growing whatever they needed for food. They kept sheep goats and cattle and they grew crops of olives and figs, grapes, barley, wheat and flax. Their whole year was tied to the changing seasons and often disrupted by invading armies and marauding wild animals and pests. The life of a shepherd changed little between the days of Old Testament times of, say, Ezekiel and that of Jesus. The shepherd led his sheep, knew each one of them by the name he'd given them and watched over them by night and by day. There was a good reason for this, because the owner of the flock would demand recompense for any lost, and if any were attacked by wild animals, evidence would have to be shown. It was a very responsible job. Ezekiel compares the rulers of people with the role of shepherd. Shouldn't shepherds take care of the flock? He asks. You're happy enough to exploit the flock under your control, but that's not really caring for them. There's no compassion, no love, no justice. You've let them run wild. And what happens when the sheep run off and out of sight? They end up 
in the undesirable company of wolves. What a contemporary message that is for us. Think of our government, elected to look after our country, or more particularly, the people of the country. Think maybe of those huge multinational companies, all those fat cat salaries that we hear about, bosses earning millions whilst the workers are on minimum wage. And the problem of exploited workers in other countries who are forced to work often in dangerous conditions so that we can have inexpensive clothing to wear. As you would expect, God says that he's unhappy with the picture as painted by Ezekiel and he's not going to let it continue. The solution is simple. God himself will take over the responsibility that had previously been delegated to the earthly shepherds, to political leaders. I will rescue them from all the places where they are scattered and gather them from the countries and bring them into their own land. There are other images too. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak. I will shepherd the flock with justice. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. Those are very much images which resonate with the life, teaching and purpose of Jesus, who would appear as the Good Shepherd some 400 or more years after this prophecy. We read similar words in Isaiah. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. So I wonder what difference would it make if those who have responsibility over so many people, be it as heads of government, politicians or heads of industry and business throughout the world, what if they saw their main priority and responsibility as that of shepherd, to care for their flock, to find it safe pasture and protection from harm. Perhaps that is something for us to think on and pray about over the coming weeks. Shepherd of all, we dare to pray for a vision that reflects you and your priorities to become the vision of our nation's leaders. Turn the hearts of those in government to the vulnerable and desperate so that all people of our nation might have hope for their future and the chance to be a blessing to the whole world. And Lord of Lords, grant us a willingness to speak out for the weak and vulnerable. Grant us a readiness to point out the corrupt and indefensible. And loving God, when cries for justice are met by violence and lawlessness, which only adds to the suffering of local communities, be the peace that speaks into these situations. Be the truth that calls for repentance, the love that demands forgiveness, and the healer who brings wholeness into broken lives and neighbourhoods. This we ask in the name of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.